Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha. So it's a delight to see so many of you present here today for a special lecture by our beloved editorial advisor, Padma Bhushan Dr. M.B. Atreya. Thank you for so much for gracing us today. So Dr. Atreya, as you all know, regular, regularly contributes to our magazine, Tattva Loka. His columns are targeted at our youth. The wisdom that he has shared with us over the years has culminated in a small campaign that we have been carrying out since the last year and a half or so. It's called Onward March to Ramarajya. We've had six distinguished lectures under the campaign, including the one by Dr. Atriya himself. And about eight articles two seminars across the country, including the one that we just had yesterday at the IIM in Bangalore. So there is something that I believe that we have and want to share with the world. And that is what is our campaign all about. So without much ado, I, I know I have been stressing Dr. Atreya too much of late. He's been not only writing on the subject, but also touring along with us. And he has come all the way today to share with us the mission, vision and values of Ramarajya that we have understood, tried to understand. So Dr. Atreya, may I request you to, to take your rightful place on the stage Namaskaram, greetings, Jai Shri Ram to the audience here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, I know several of you for many years and many of you have been regular attendees at my lectures. The theme keeps changing. Uh, naturally, we need to renew and uh, explore new ideas. So today, uh, I've chosen to continue this campaign of Onward March uh, and take it, for example, in Delhi with Bhavan's Institute, uh, Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan, uh, we did a seminar on RR vision and values, just focused on vision. <clears throat> and here we've added the mission as well, <clears throat> because we are there is more clarity. Uh, in Bangalore, it was uh, Ramarajya for modern governance, <clears throat> a topic which is of great interest to many, particularly to the moderator of the panel later today, Mr. T.S. Krishnamurthy, XCEC. <clears throat> that not only Ramarajya ideas can be employed in industry and educational sector, but also in government. <clears throat> uh, idea being that there is a structure in government, constitution, executive, judiciary, legislature. 
So it is not the paper of the legal, issue of legality, but it is the same very nice law and can be implemented by people with the values of Ramarajya. The gap between Niti, which is easy to legislate, and Nyaya, which is harder to deliver justice, uh, can be bridged by this value. And today, uh, let me briefly share with you, as you know, there will always be a longer question and answer session. That is what makes it more interesting, valuable. We clarify things, we remove doubts. I also learn in the process, and it gives us some ideas for our future lectures and articles. <coughs> ah, so there are just seven slides that I'd like to share with you. Uh, what is the mission of Ram Rajya? That is, that Rajya by Rama by now has assumed a, a great amount of public uh, consciousness and awareness. In principle, it could be called the mission of Dharma Rajya. Yesterday in Bangalore, somebody was raising this question. Why don't we call it Dharma Rajya? Dharma Rajya is valuable, good, good title, but it is a generic concept. And the answer I gave there was, some of you marketing people may, this may ring a bell with you. Ramarajya is a very powerful brand of Dharmarajya. Then Rama name recall is much more than Dharma name recall. So we can liberate this great uh, memory. Now we could call it Bharatarajya. We could call it Prithurajya. We could call it Kshakurajya. But at the time of Rama's life as an avatar, uh, a human avatar of God personally, delivering this Rajya, so we retain the name Rama Rajya. <clears throat> and then the vision, uh, what are the values? So not that they wrote these things, they didn't articulate them, but we can in the modern context interpret what they did in terms of our own model. And I am presenting this to you as a hypothesis. We can add, elaborate. But uh, I think the idea is to have the core four or five elements of each of these three concepts. Then relevance for today, Maybe the word relevance is an understatement, very mild. Urgency for today, the imperative for today of this Ramarajya. And always things which are conceptual, uh, the hardest thing is to implement them. So I'll talk about some of the strategies for implementation. For those who ha are in the Dvaitic or, or Vishishra Dvaitic mind of mind, that the Bhakti is a strong element of them, just recalling in passing the many names with which Rama has been worshipped and venerated in this country. And the beauty of each of those names, uh, and the, uh, that itself we can go into it in depth, uh, why he is called Saketa Rama uh, or Kalyana Rama, various kinds of names that he has. And finally, our shared action plan, myself and each one of you and anyone to whom you can share this idea, it is not by government dictate or law this will happen. They are all enabling instruments, but the most enabling final uh, step is values and commitment of people to begin to spread this Ramarajya concept in their own circles and it engulfs the nation. So mission of Ramarajya. <clears throat> so we are all familiar with the people's expectation of good governance. The Indian people are voting more and more wisely. One set of criteria for state assembly elections another set of criteria for national parliament elections. In each case, that is the reason why a national party sometimes does not do so well at state level assembly elections, because it is focusing too much on national and international issues and people are preoccupied with their own local problems. So good governance at all levels <clears throat> for six dimensions. That, that Those are the things that are outstanding in the Ayodhya described in Valmiki Ramayana. Uh, and each one of these has behind it a few shlokas that one can go into. This is a, this is a distillation from the original of Valmiki Ramayana. <clears throat> First of all, uh, good governance must ensure, this also ties in with modern economic development theories, the, uh, the pronouncements and declarations of WHO, UNICEF, uh, World Trade Organization, various others. Uh, the foundation is the physical fitness of all the citizens of the uh, Rajya. You know, earlier it was a relatively smaller population, smaller territory like Ayodhya. Now we have a much more uh, daunting challenge of a huge population, a huge territory. Still uh, in, in the development models also we talk about health as the first criterion and how 
the allocation for health in India is very low at 2%, should go to 5% plus, and how those countries like China, which invested in uh, upfront physical fitness, are now reaping the dividend of high levels of energy, productivity, uh, d d diligence, and hard work, which gives them massive exports, uh, with which, of course, they are doing some Rajasic things, like military development and so on. The second uh, dimension is that people have to become mature, avoid unnecessary arguments, fights, conflicts, some of the things that now happen in uh, 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 fringe groups of the country. The psychological maturity has many dimensions. I have written about this in my next article for Tatwaloka that will come out in February 2020. I have sent in, just elaborating on this one slide, uh, a two-page article uh, on covering these six dimensions. The third is that there must be continuous jignasa, thirst for knowledge, both uh, aparavidya and paravidya, what is necessary for current work the, with the level of agricultural and artisanal technology, building technology and so on, uh, as well as the uh, learning of uh, relevant prayers, shastras, not only Sanskrit but also local languages, uh, like uh, Tulsidas writing in Maithiri. Uh, but there is a very important aesthetic dimension, the appreciation of color, color of various kinds, temple, architecture, designs, uh, the paintings, uh, as well as sculpture, uh, <coughs> Uh, material well-being, of course, there must, the, our Shastra Purushartha does not deny the importance of wealth. It says, Udyogam uh, lakshanam, you should work hard. Uh, artham you should be uh, accumulating wealth. Uh, so, uh, but Artha is always number two in the list of Purusharthas. Any literature, anywhere in Sanskrit, you see, it will never be stated earlier. Dharma is always first. After that, uh, Artha. We also accept Kama. And Artha is needed to enjoy various pleasures, not only sex, but also many other desires that we have. But the Ramarajya value would say, don't keep multiplying your material desires. Uh, and uh, Dharma will qualify this material uh, objective in two ways. That earn your wealth in Dharmic means and spend your wealth also in a way that it doesn't injure your health, your family, uh, the society. Then finally, there must be a spiritual well-being in line with the Jivashrama, which is a very ancient concept, Brahmacharya Grahastha, one of Prasa Sanyas, that uh, uh, all citizens, must, as they live longer, they must make move on this, and uh, some initial teaching in the family, in the Padashara, uh, and uh, uh, later on, Swadhyaya, uh, Guru, going towards well-being. So, uh, even modern governments, every government, if, if they follow these six parameters in their mission, they will find a highly satisfied population. Uh, <clears throat> and then productive as well. This is uh, Mahatma Gandhi's quotation, some of you may remember. Uh, he was the one who reminded us after maybe 500 years, 1,000 years of invasions and forgetfulness. And he took us back to the value and the power of Ramarajya. And he was such a secular Catholic person that uh, it, Ram and Rahim were the same, although people who wanted partition did not, uh, unfortunately, agree with him. Otherwise, we would have stayed a more united country uh, with much greater influence in the world. The ancient ideal... Uh, also, this Panchayati Raj, village self-governance, decentralized administration, uh, and every citizen participating uh, and getting uh, justice delivered, the Nyaya, and not just the Niti. Now, the, the more beautiful the Niti is, like our constitution, various acts of law, and less the delivery, the frustration is higher. <coughs> Swami Vivekananda also uh, brought out in his lectures the idea of universal brotherhood uh, within the kingdom as well as with the rest of the world. Uh, Rama did not himself invade and conquer territories. Uh, he went to Lanka not to conquer Lanka and make it a colony. He went to Lanka only to rescue Sita and in the process also rescued the people of Lanka from the rule of Ravana. <coughs> So we have talked about the mission, which is uh, what, what is the role of government. Now we are talking about if the governments pursue that mission, 
what kind of society they will create and sustain. So this is a, a, a dream. It was achieved earlier. Dreams are not permanently achieved. We lose them. We regress. We fall back. We have to continue to uh, come back and recapture those uh, dreams. So uh, in a society where there is Shanti, Ananda and Bhaichara, Brotherhood, Togetherness, Loka uh, Samastha, Sikhinobhavantu, that kind of uh, uh, value uh, demonstrated in practice. Uh, rule not for the rulers, but like Abraham Lincoln defined in principle, uh, but not fully realized even in the United States. A government of the people, by the people, for the people. Uh, so people-centered rule, like student-centered teaching or child-centered parenting, uh, that not authority dominating over people, but the government and officials truly living. Uh, we have many of these concepts in in uh, in terms of words. The uh, government uh, living up to the idea of a public servant, not a public master, which people often experience in reality. But it is not one-sided. Just the government in Ramarajya, it is there is enormous responsibility on the citizen as well. When the uh, higher levels are less authoritarian, more delegative, uh, the people below have to be more responsible. Uh, in China, it is the opposite problem. When the authority is highly uh, uh, influential and oppressive, people like in Hong Kong uh, or Xinjiang have to rebel against the authority. We have the opposite problem, citizen discipline. Uh, it's not possible to have 100% uh, absence of crime because uh, Rajas and Tamas are part of human personality and some people for, for various reasons take to that path. So uh, Ramarajya values and vision include also Dandaniti. It is not a soft regime. It is not a permissive regime. Where necessary, uh, the punishments have to be given. It is also the kind of society where we have seen uh, the, the rise of cities like Ujjain, Kalidasa, Bhavabhuti, Bhartruhari, Bhatta, uh, various kinds of scholarship, art, culture, the flourishing of so many forms of dance, uh, music, uh, and so on. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the values. So we have talked about the mission, what's the role of government, and two, what kind of future aspiration, dream it should pursue, and how, uh, what are the values which should drive this journey from the current situation, which is not desperate. India is not at the level of anarchy. It is doing reasonably well. There is a Manushya Rajya in India that's taking place. How can we take it to Rama Rajya? That is the question. Uh, the core value is only one, Dharma, uh, and it has many components. Uh, Sati Meva Jayate is the motto of the Indian government on the president's letterhead. Uh, and I don't tire of uh, stressing the word Eva in that statement. He doesn't say Satyam Kadaji Jayate. He doesn't say Satyam Api Jayate. Satyam Eva Jayate. It is a powerful, we don't often fully understand it, a conviction, declaration, an affirmation that don't worry, it has to succeed. Satyam will come round. But we can accelerate the process. We don't have to wait uh, uh, helplessly for this to come true. So, uh, the uh, Anandavalli uh, starts with Satyam Vada, that is true. The second verse is Dharmam Chara, uh, Ahimsa, uh, non-violence towards other human beings. So that's the beginning of avoidance of conflicts, of exploitation of the weak by the strong. But Ahimsa does not mean, mean that the state should be soft and helpless like we now have to some extent. So the power is more with some... Uh, sectoral interest groups than with the legitimate government and government is captured as they say even regulatory agencies are sometimes captured uh, so the ahimsa should include as i said earlier the dandaniti and uh, every citizen every class every group perform their sodharma which in industrial management terms may be called their core competence what they have inherited what they have developed as their special skills take for example my own village uh, Patamadai, in Tirunelveli district. I would say that it has two core competences. One is that it produces the most beautiful mats in the world, uh, Sital Party. Second, it has produced Swami Sivananda. What more do you want? 
in the Korkan. We take any place in the world, in, in this country, there will be some Punya Bhumi, there will be some Punya Atma who has come out of there. <coughs> uh, the leaders at any level, corporate leaders, NGO leaders, academic leaders, uh, public sector leaders, other private corporate, and leaders at state and national level, for all of them, there is an ideal value from Ramayan, Ram Rajya, which is that they should become Mariyada Purushottam. This uh, image, this standing, this reputation cannot be earned by orders, diktats from the chairman's office. It cannot be also earned by bribing with high salaries, bonuses, stock options and so on. This Mariyada Purushottam has to come from a genuine reverence, appreciation, uh, almost uh, into a divine feeling of this is a leader for whom I am willing to give my life. I will work hard. I will follow the direction. So, not the richest uh, Purusha, but a Mariyada Purushottama is the ideal. So, the concept of a Raja Rishi, which you've had a long time. <coughs> Rama, Bharata, they were all uh, Rishis in addition to being Rajas. <coughs> and uh, uh, this uh, adherence to Dharma, Satyam, <coughs> translates into a number of other human relationship values, compassion, uh, care, uh, for example, care of the elderly, care of the sick, care of uh, the disabled, care of the poor, uh, various issues that we have in modern society <coughs> uh, and commitment. These are values from above, from the top, uh, prime minister down to the district officer uh, and the uh, lower level subordinate staff. They should demonstrate these values. But it is not a one-sided bargain. The citizen must, uh, every worker, <coughs> And one of the problems India faced between 1950 and 1990, at least for 40 years, people like Mr. Jaraman will vouch for it, uh, Mr. Krishnamurti, chairman of three big public enterprises, BHL, Maruti, Sale, used to regret that one of the things that we had done was to destroy the work culture in this country. The Ramarajya, the Gita, the all Atishudi, wherever you go, even in local languages, they talk about uh, uh, work, learning, uh, efficiency, yoga, karma, sukhaushalam. But the strong combination of unions, ideologies, multiple unions, conflicts, labor legislation, the court's bias uh, towards labor, all these for various reasons. The workers, in my view, from my days in Geskin Williams and later in many client companies, were extremely intelligent, highly skilled. They knew they could do much more they will deliberately withhold their productivity. Every technology change, new machine expansion will be a, a bone of contention, bargaining. Uh, even highly skilled people like airline pilots. So you go from uh, Caravel to Boeing, Boeing to Airbus, and every time it makes the flying easier. Uh, more technology, more power. But for easy, allowing the technology, Chandrasekhar knows very well, XL and T. So we as a nation held ourselves back because while the top level wanted to do many good things, the lower level didn't participate. I think after 1991, the reform, some amount of uh, uh, awareness has come in and the union membership has declined. Uh, leaders have learned a little bit about it. And I personally felt the huge resistance of not just labor, uh, in uh, the Department of Telecom. Qualified engineers who were in the service, thousands of them, were against any kind of reform in the DOT because it was such a valuable monopoly for the government to have. Uh, so when we broke some of those things, the work culture is improving. In the new startups, the entrepreneurial initiatives, the work culture is very high. It is, in fact, excessive. We have to counsel them to slow down a little bit and take care of their health and avoid excessive stress and burnout. <clears throat> I think we need a great thousands of Hanumans in the country. Um, and the role of uh, human resource management is to make them aware of their uh, potential, that their results are not aware, as uh, Jambavan had to do to Hanuman, that you can cross the sea and go to Lanka. Uh, and uh, Hanuman's final wish, uh, not to go to heaven, but for Rama to be in his heart, and for Hanuman to be a Chiranjeevi, roaming around the world. That's kind of worker culture that we need to have, each one of us. This also means that uh, everyone from uh, the uh, clerk to the uh, chief secretary, uh, from the 
janitor to the chairman is at the moment primarily a karmachari working for a living mainly motivated by the salary pension benefits that will come but all people need to make a transition from karmachari to karma yogi karma is the same rewards are the same if they are even better but the attitude of performing that karma is radically different and consequently the joy in the work no stress continuous energy willingness to do more uh, is part of the work culture <clears throat> well since he was educated there's more than one quote from gandhi ji uh, <clears throat> what is the relevance for today uh, the historic heritage of ram rajya which had been forgotten for several centuries and maybe for uh, 50 years or more <clears throat> we were even uh, suffering from an inferiority complex a reluctance to even talk about rama and rajya and the ancient hindu civilization and so on only now people are encouraged to at least own the heritage <clears throat> and we of course there can be some excess we should stop that it is not for arrogance but to some kind of a renaissance and uh, uh, renewal of self confidence in the uh, population <clears throat> so in india it is not relevant in a more general sense a weak sense but it is critical after three centuries of technology since the industrial revolution in england Uh, the early steam engine and steam related technology uh, coal mining and so on now people are realizing the world has been substantially damaged by this high level of uh, technology and consumption that we have plastics packaging transportation airlines <clears throat> so now we have the oxford dictionary said the most important new word in english in 2019 is climate crisis the shift from climate change which is a neutral softer term to climate crisis uh, some of you may know that uh, last two weeks ago the european union's new president newly elected president the german ex defense minister lady uh, uh, ursula von der leyen she has and, and her cabinet have declared formally declared a state of emergency in europe in eu what is the emergency they call it climate emergency Indira Gandhi declared a political emergency in our country. <coughs> Somebody may declare a military emergency. This is a climate emergency. So without the Ram Rajya values, re uh, uh, called by Gandhi ji and others, we cannot deal with this crisis. <coughs> so if the rest of the world is ready for Ram Rajya, India with 1.3 billion population and a poor strategy in population control. and uh, still a backlog of rural population agrarian distress and uh, poverty uh, higher rates of uh, child mortality maternal mortality than bangladesh and lanka india is even more ready for these values so we need to have a new creative dialectic discussion on the idea of india the idea that we have been pursuing since 1947 uh, has changed a little bit in 1991 and the, uh, on the economic front and it needs to change now on the social and cultural front uh, that uh, an idea of india not run entirely on secular western uh, concepts only they, they are useful up to a point the good theories various kinds of books and articles but also taking lessons from uh, the ancient idea and strengths of india as myself mrs uh, chakravarti and some others have tried to do since 1980 blend the indian modern management techniques with the uh, uh, upanishadic and gita and other traditional values of india and it, it is worked very well <coughs> the ram rajya is vital for the new india that the prime minister is talking about creating a new india uh, faster growing more equitable more inclusive <coughs> a 5 trillion dollar economy in 5 years by 2024 uh, if we are to reach that uh, we need even more recognition and implementation of ram rajya values <clears throat> i think some of the conflicts are out of anger anger about resources access to resources government jobs reservations uh, regional aspirations uh, i think we have to convert this anger into some uh, sublimate it into good clear creative energy so what are the strategies for implementation i think the greatest danger is that if one generation of parents are themselves ignorant about their history 
then the chances are that next generation will not learn much about it, except a few youth who are influenced by external mentors and influencers and go searching to find out. This is the same in uh, music or dance. If uh, one set of parents have no idea of Carnatic music, the beauty of the compositions, the variety of ragas and so on, or they don't know about the Bharatanatyam and its beauty of uh, portraying various things, then the children will probably be filled by Netflix and uh, Microsoft, uh, Net, various kinds of external uh, influences, vacuum, and will be filled by something else. So the parents are the first one themselves reawakened to the concept and values of Ramarajya, uh, which is Dharmarajya in the name of Ram. <coughs> and the teachers in our uh, colleges and universities, not only through the formal syllabus, but otherwise also extracurricular social interactions, tutoring, <coughs> reinforce those values, which are perfectly consistent with a, a democratic government, a uniform civil code, a global uh, order uh, as part of our contribution to the global order. <coughs> so we are talking about the parents, the teachers, and organizational leaders themselves should, re re if they have had the fortune in their family <coughs> of hearing and learning about Ramayan from their grandparents, uncles, aunts, parents, <coughs> the elder siblings, this is becoming less and less. In my youth, this was very common in every family. And there was a uh, Ramanami, <coughs> Diwali time, uh, various kinds. And uh, Ramayana was being retold by R.K. Narayan, uh, Rajaji, and many others. <coughs> so organizational leaders uh, should blend these values. And this is beginning to happen. Good corporate governance is taking some of the uh, Ramaraja type of uh, values. Uh, for example, the uh, uh, wor workers' engagement, sensitivity, uh, diversity, uh, inclusion, uh, of people uh, and uh, caring uh, for the employee. And uh, very dramatic instances like the chairman of uh, uh, the uh, fast food chain uh, being uh, dismissed by the board immediately because of some uh, uh, improper relationship with one of the employees, McDonald's. <coughs> uh, then there are community leaders who are not formally appointed, who are not uh, remunerated, but they are the emerging social opinion leaders accepted in the village, in the taluk, in the district, in the suburb, in the city. Uh, and they also should become aware. So this we will not do as long as we are in denial of our past, of our heritage, of its value. I think we don't need to be jingoistic, but we need to be confident to re re educate ourselves and revive and uh, popularize these concepts. And the government should provide supportive institutions, leadership. For example, there are many more Sanskrit colleges in Germany and Europe than there are in India. All major universities in France, England, Germany, and elsewhere are reviving the teaching of Latin, Greek, and the classics for them not to forget their own ancient civilizational roots. And uh, there is much in common. There has been contact between Greek and Indian civilizations, the Greek plays and the Sanskrit plays uh, have uh, in, uh, influenced each other. The only difference being that in Sanskrit drama, <coughs> there is no tragedy by convention. Uh, agree with all playwrights. Why? Uh, that in the play, you can show all kinds of tragedy, but at ultimately, dharma will always win over adharma. The villain cannot win. Uh, and the public should see uh, denouma, endings, which are reinforcing dharma. <coughs> uh, in fact, uh, China has been opening, as some of you may know, it is no longer Marxist 100%. It is a, a dictatorship, uh, true, but they are now turning to soft power. <coughs> like in Germany, uh, Germany has been opening uh, the Goethe Institute. And all over, we've had them for 50, 60 years now. Uh, our, many of our young people go there and learn German. <clears throat> Some of you may have learned it, Grundstufe, Thailand, so I, they, they pass certificates at various levels and come out. China has, has been opening dozens of Confucius institutes around the world. They are spreading Confucian philosophy. <clears throat> they claim that China is the most ancient and greatest civilization. <clears throat> 
the middle kingdom is a model for the world and uh, we all should read written document uh, reasoning being china dream there is no india dream which is collectively agreed 1.2 billion chinese are now focused on the china dream which means global dominance global prominence recognized as the number one <coughs> with the number two a significant distance behind <coughs> okay i mean some modern gurus also uh, reinforce that so, there are many people who are devotees of sat sai baba uh, we have many gurus <coughs> you have your primary loyalty is to your kula guru but you also have uh, gurus uh, of other faiths and so on Uh, traveling gurus, uh, Saniya gurus. <clears throat> so, so this I Baba is inspired some people. Some people are critical. Some people swear only by uh, Shirdi Sai Baba. Both traditions are relevant, and likewise other gurus are coming. But they say without practicing the discipline, 